when we have a social security disability or an SSI claim, obviously we are very, I hate to say the word dependent, but dependent upon our medical providers, both for competent treatment and for competent record keeping. And both are obviously super important um, to the claim and to your health, really. So have a situation where a person is inquiring what to do um, with a difficult provider. So by difficult, um, she's referring to uh, rude, uh, a rude office. Um, and to be a little bit more specific, um, it was like a therapeutic type of medical provider wasn't the primary care and it wasn't an orthopedist or anything like that. And it was someone she went to regularly, but then for various reasons had to stop, you know, could have included um, financial copay. So stopping, when I mean stopping, I mean like for six weeks um, and then return. Um, maybe needed money for copay, transportation, that kind of thing. So, you know, when you get to a, a medical office and they apparently treat treat a person coldly when they haven't shown up, um, not like they were a no-show, just didn't schedule a new appointment for a number of weeks, the cold shoulder is one thing. Obviously, that would be very unprofessional, so I'd start to question the competency of the office just as a general rule. But also... Um, they had received apparently requests from the SSA for the medical records. If that's the first time they received a request from the SSA, I would say that they've had very few customer patients in their, in their tenure, because that is extremely, extremely common for all providers and particularly this kind of um, therapeutic provider. So that's really weird. So either they're lying to the patient about this being so untoward or they really don't have patients or they toss things in the mail, in the garbage, such as requests for medical records from a federal agency. Uh, in addition to being a violation of your HIPAA rights, since the request that the SSA sends to providers is a HIPAA compliant form, it's, it's noted as per SSA, as the SSA-827. And when a patient submits a HIPAA complying request that has all the information needed to the provider, it doesn't matter if the SSA faxes it to them or mails it to them or, or Staples does it for you, or you do it yourself. Point is, it's sent, it's received, you now have HIPAA rights under the access rules. So, cold shoulder there, a little indignation apparently that they were being put out of their, you know, out of their way due to a medical records request. That's bizarre, isn't that your job? Um, anyway, so the concern comes down, you know, the, the claimant really doesn't feel comfortable going there anymore with this kind of treatment. And apparently the treatment was from both the, like the office manager or receptionist and the doctor. Um, very weird. I, you know, I think there's an issue there. But so the question was getting to it. Can that office hurt her case if she stops going there? Um, I, I would have to say. If you're uncomfortable with a medical provider and their competency. Get out. <laughs> Run and don't turn back. Um, can they hurt your case? Well. And this is where I'm going to talk about using diplomacy. They don't have to know you're running and not looking back. You know, don't wear your agenda on your sleeve. Um, they haven't sent the medical records yet. You want to urge them to do that. Um, you know, if, if it means sending your own records request to them separately and aside from the SSA request, perhaps. Um, in fact, that's probably what we'll do. But also, when you, you don't have to tell a doctor you're not coming back. None of his business, right? 
Um, normally, perhaps if it was under good circumstances and you were moving, you might say, I'm moving. I can't, you know, I'm going to miss you. Right. But you don't, there's no law that says you have to do that. As a matter of diplomacy for the sole purpose of getting the medical records and getting them, I think the claimant is concerned that they might input some negative things into the records if they feel betrayed, you know, by a, a I want to say a customer because it doesn't really seem like patient doctor relationship, you know, when they're losing a customer, now they're going to backstab. And that was basically the crux of the question from the claimant. I would find that to be really egregious and, and, and shocking. Has it ever happened before? It probably has. Um, would I expect it? Still not. However, why even risk it? Just be diplomatic. If you get those medical records, because once you have them, when you don't go back, they can't touch your records. Um, the concern was also that when the person gets a new doctor, a replacement, and that doctor requests records, if that's what the doctor does, it seems like so many don't even do that anymore. So like they don't care about your past <laughs> medical records. Um, but if they did, what, you know, what could be in them that the, the old provider, if unprofessional and corrupt might do with those records or add to them or whatever. So my thought was just, you know, mitigate that risk, get the medical records before you, before, you know, the ball has dropped and they're clearly not getting you back again. Um, bees with, you get more bees with honey. You know, the urge might be to tell them what you think. And, you know, goodness knows, I, I, I have these, these feelings myself at times, but the better part of valor will, will, will be to your better outcome. Um, Bees with honey, do not, it's none of their business what you're doing that you're moving on. So don't tell them. They'll figure it out eventually when you don't come back in a year, right? You want to get your medical records. And if you're concerned about that, they might screw around with them. Obviously, the less they know about your, your intentions, the better. You know, getting the records in securely um, would be the goal. And it is not a problem to change up providers in the middle of a case. Not, not in my experience at all. Um, if you are going to drop a provider and not replace the provider, and it's an important part of your case, let's say it's physical pain, that's a problem. You know, a little gap is okay, maybe a month, but, you know, if you go six months without a replacement. So as I would also generally suggest considering doing, immediately replace the doctor, it might take you months to get the next appointment. If you're not worried about competent treatment, just don't like the attitude of the prior office, maybe have another visit, you know, to fill in that gap time. And again, that's if you're not concerned, you know, with safety, if it's more of a can't stand their bloody attitude, you know, feeling and you cringe every time you got to go in there. Um, that's really a personal choice. So I'd leave that up to you. Um, how much you can tolerate, but yeah, I mean, if, if a doctor's office is complaining about providing medical records to the SSA, when the SSA sends them, the unprofessionalism in that entire interaction is mind blowing to me. It's just crazy. So right there, I probably wouldn't want to be treating um, with a facility that just doesn't get it, you know? The claimant is under the suspicion that it's really all about the money and the negativity was because she hadn't been producing money for them in six weeks. Um, that's that's pathetic, obviously. I mean, do they do they have no no customers? And if so, why why might that be? I mean, they're medical providers, it seems really hard for them not to be overwhelmed with with patients. That's how much, I don't know, issues there are. Um so either they are losing perhaps all of their customers because of their behaviors or competency or, or something else, who knows? But it's a really strange scenario when both the office staff and the actual doctor behave so incredibly poorly. Um, usually, sometimes you have a, a, a doctor with really bad bedside manner and then you have um, 
the office staff is so nice, they try to make up for it, you know? Or you have a nice doctor, but the office staff is a bunch of weeaches. Um, I see that a lot, actually. A lot of times it'll be the doctor who's just doing the, the medical job and the staff is a bunch of little Nazis in there. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. But um, anyway, that's the situation there um, and my thoughts on it. I don't know if you guys have had any any situations like that. Um, it's stressful, but never to me. If she changes up this provider with someone else, I could care less. It's not gonna, in terms of the case. It's totally fine. We will work with it. We will figure it out. Um, I would say start getting up. You know, boom, boom with that new provider right away. You don't really want a gap in the records and the treatment. Um, and then once you're settled with a new one and you have those medical records from the old one, ideally, um, kiss them goodbye. All right. Not really kiss them, but you know, all right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.